All right, guys, let's get started. Welcome to Brilliant Directories Webinar Web Wednesday, episode 47. If you're here, you're looking for tips to grow your online community, and let me tell you, you are in the right place. Uh, today's presenters, myself, Jason, there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. Thank you, David, for joining us today. Hey, everyone. Hope you're all having a great and productive Wednesday. It's great to be back on these webinars. Awesome, David. We got a lot of great updates to share with you guys today, so I'll just dive right into it uh, right now. For those of you who haven't joined our Facebook group, I'm sure everyone on the webinar today has joined our marketing strategy group on Facebook. It's free to join. It's a great place to continue the conversations after webinar Wednesdays. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. If you want to just take 30 seconds to join the group now, uh, we can wait for you. And it's a very active group. I'm in there. Other BD team members are in there. And I see awesome participation uh, and questions being asked and answered in that group. So if you're looking for an, an edge and to give your site an additional boost and to also collaborate and learn from fellow directory website owners, make sure you go to our Facebook group and join today, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. And if this is your first time joining in for Webinar Wednesday, welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the tribe. Webinar Wednesday is a great place to learn more about how to grow your online community faster as well. A lot of the things that we cover here on tips to save you time, how to avoid certain pitfalls. So whether you're just starting your site or you're an established organization, Webinar Wednesdays is a great place to learn and gain new skills. Uh, a lot of it is focused around marketing and growing your community. So topics that we'll cover are things like how to convert website visitors into free or paying members, how to increase your website traffic utilizing SEO strategies, how to identify revenue opportunities. Every industry and every website is a little different. And your business model or the model in which you acquire uh, new members, whether free or paid, might be different for every industry. So what's good about Webinar Wednesday is we can see different types of website examples and we can assess what would be the best strategy or options to increase revenue and member acquisition. So if you have questions about how to improve your site's performance via marketing uh, ideas and strategies, this is a great place to ask them. And also, just a friendly reminder, we want to remind you that with Brilliant Directories, you have an awesome support team that does have your back. And good times to contact the support team. If things are not working on your site, that should be. Um, if there's an issue or you don't know how to do something, you're looking for answers to how-to questions, those are great reasons to contact the BD support team. So if you're looking to uh, report an issue on your site or you're looking to make comprehensive edits, uh, either they'll be able to provide you with an answer or direct you to a resource uh, that could help you uh, solve your problem. So uh, when you need help, feel free to reach out to the support team to help troubleshoot things on your website. All right. Um, so this week is especially awesome. We have a lot of updates to share with you. Uh, the the Brilliant Directories development team has been rocking it this whole year, and the last few months, months have been no exception. We've seen some amazing things being launched, not only security and stability, but also those bells and whistles, those fun features that we all want to be part of our websites. And a lot of it comes from feedback in the Facebook group, as well as the webinars here. So it's really important, and it's really great that you guys are participating in the webinar Wednesdays, because you're not only helping to make Brilliant Directory is better because it's powering your websites, it's helping to make your websites better as well. So we got a, a long list of updates here. I'm gonna try to spend as little time as possible but still wanna demonstrate um, how these updates work and how they're going to affect your website for the better. So I'll start with the first one at the top of that list. There's a new method to display lead and review links and let me show you exactly what I'm referring to here. So when, you, when your members come to the site and they log in, just click on log in, this is at one of our demo sites. 
uh, in the sidebar here, the manage leads and the manage reviews, those used to be inside of a little toggle button that said um, website messages or announcements or something like that. We've taken them out of that dropdown, so it's a lot easier for your members to see if they have leads or reviews. Um, if you've removed leads or reviews from your website, they won't see these, uh, but this provides a lot more visibility uh, for them to know when they should take action when they're logged into their accounts. So these are now independent uh, links in the sidebar here rather than being kind of hidden inside of a toggle like this. So that's going to help your members identify when they need to take action uh, when they've been notified of a lead or review. Uh, next thing is a better dashboard member uh, menu when users are on mobile devices. Uh, and let me kind of show you how that works. So when members are logged into their account, I'm going to toggle to a mobile view here. Okay, great. So I'm in a mobile view now. Um, let me go to the home page. Before, the members were not able to see this link unless they were on inside their dashboard pages. So when they were on mobile, it wasn't really easy to toggle um, their dashboard uh, menu options. So now this link will follow them no matter what page they're on uh, as when they're logged into the site on a mobile device. Um, so that's really nice. And also here they have their view listing and their edit listing uh, links here. And so it's really easy for them to manage their account via their, their dashboard menu on tablets and mobile devices. Um, in addition to that, there used to be on mobile, so this is a desktop view, this little drop down is what they see on desktop, and this is what used to show um, on mobile views. The problem was it takes up a tremendous amount of vertical real estate on a mobile view just to do two things, view listing and edit listing. Um, so now this, is, this has been uh, replaced. Let me go back to the mobile view. And now they can easily see those options here uh, in the, uh, the account menu here. And it does create like a much more like an app experience. So those of you that are interested in converting your site to an app, 95% of the work is done for you. You just need to render your site within a, in an application, a mobile application. All right, um, next one is related to inside of the admin area. It's, it's lazy load for the image manager. And you guys have seen me kind of struggle with this in webinars in the past. What this is referring to is if you have ever gone to the content area and the image manager, sometimes this page would take a long time to load. Um, you can see it loaded relatively quick right now you can see that there are 777 images in the image manager. Before it would attempt to load all 777 images and it would, it would really stall, stall out or take a long time before you could start using the image manager. So what we've done by default, and again, this was a suggestion from the Webinar Wednesday family here, is to load just 25 to start and then you could click to load more 25 at a time. Now what's really cool is if you needed to sort or, or search for an image, you could just do a quick filter in the top right here. I'm gonna search for dance. Oh, nothing there for dance, bad example. Let me search for logo. So we can see everything that has logo here. So it's really easy to find images as well. So those of you that have sites with lots of images, I know that a lot of the wedding directories are very visual and they upload a lot of high quality images to their site. This is going to save you guys time uh, when managing your sites, uh, your images from the image manager area. The other great thing uh, with this, Jason, is that now when you upload new images, the most recent uploaded image will actually show first within this image manager. That way you don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom or dig through an alphabetically sorted image manager to get to that last image that you uploaded. Actually, you're absolutely right. That's a super convenient. So as you upload images, your most recent image will be here at the top so you don't have to search for it somewhere else among the 777 images here on the site. I guess 777 is, is lucky for a, a jackpot in Las Vegas as well. So maybe we'll have some good luck today on the webinar here. 
All right, I've got a lot of updates. I'm going to try to breeze through these. Okay, the one that I'm most uh, excited about and is going to add probably the most value to uh, the directory owners who are, are trying to generate revenue is the new transaction history reporting. It's a small update, but it is a huge update with the amount of value that you can gain from this. And we've created a demo site with some dummy transactions, test transactions, so we can really see the value of how this works. Uh, so let me show you the new transaction history reporting and a few key elements that should add some more value to your organization. So we're gonna toggle on over to finance and to transaction history. All right, so some of you are probably familiar with this page. Um, there are a few key differences here. You can now see the totals in the different tabs. So there's payments received, those are successful payments. Upcoming payments are payments that are scheduled, recurring payments that are scheduled to bill within the next 14 days. So that's really nice. Past due payments, if somebody's credit card is not working and, and they missed an upcoming payment, uh, you can see all the past due payments here. The total refunded payments, and if there was a future payment, maybe there's a payment coming next month and you're giving your member uh, a free month because of some customer service issue, you can actually stop that future payment. So these are your stopped payments. Now here's the most valuable part about this page is this date range picker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to August, the month of August. I'm gonna do August 1st to August 31st and I'll do a search. And what's gonna happen is all the tabs at the top are gonna to update with the totals. So what we can see in this, in this kind of sample uh, simulation here is there was 126,628 payments received in the month of August. Um, the upcoming payments, there's none because we're already in the past. Uh, th there were 9,000 past due payments, money that we didn't realize or collect on. Let me click on this tab, by the way, and kind of show you what you can do in this tab. It also shows you how much was refunded that month and how many payments you stopped that month. What's really ni nice about the past due is there is an actions tab and you can attempt to collect the payment. So maybe the card reached its maximum limit that day. There's a lot of reasons a credit card might not be able to process on a specific day, but your team can come in here and attempt to collect the payment. You can email the member, uh, and there's a lot of other actions here that you can apply uh, related to past due payments. So um, when you have a lot of recurring subscriptions, it's very common that uh, past due payments start to add up. But with this uh, information and with the tools to collect, uh, you could be proactive and you can reconcile and, and minimize a lot of the past due payments owed to your organization. Also, past due payments are a great way to reconnect with a member who might have signed up a year ago and their yearly payment skipped, and they, they, they probably have a new credit card. That's often that fraud happens and they have to get a new credit card number. So that's a time where someone from your team can call them, help them update their profile, and you can turn that past due payment experience into something positive for the member by providing them with a little extra attention. So if you guys haven't, haven't done it yet, go to your admin, check out the transactions history page, and play around with the date range picker. Compare your months like February, March, and you can kind of see exactly uh, how many refunds you're doing each month. And you can set milestones and goals to help reduce those numbers and reduce um, you know, cancellations and things like that. All right, the next thing is, is just a small one. It is the new collapse design for the admin menu. Uh, so for a lot of our power users out there that need to maximize their screen space, uh, this new toggle up here, it used to hide the menu all together. Um, now it keeps the icons. And when you hover over the icons, you have access to your links. So it saves you about 100 or so plus pixels on your screen. So if you have a large screen or a small screen uh, and you kind of know where things are, uh, this will keep things nice and tidy for you 
Uh, and what's nice is it should, um, let's go back to the dashboard here. As you click around the admin, it should remember if you have it collapsed or open. Uh, so that's just a small design update there, and it should help you um, when you're using the admin on your mobile device as well. All right, and that would have been the end of the lab updates, but there is more. Uh, we've added over 100 new Google fonts in the design settings. A lot of you are familiar with choosing the Google font you want to style on your site. Uh, Google launches new fonts every year, and uh, we've updated ours for this year, so we have all the new updated Google fonts as options to select in your design settings. Um, the next one, photo albums with only one image. Uh, so we're all familiar with photo albums. Here is a ferocious uh, jaguar with multiple photos in a photo album. Uh, but sometimes your members only upload one photo to the photo album, and we don't really need to see the thumbnails below because it's only one image. Uh, so what we've done is now, um, when there is only one image in a photo album, again, it's all about saving space and providing a better user experience. So it won't show the one photo album thumbnail here. It'll just show the single image. So uh, that'll save, again, some uh, another 100 pixels. And on mobile, these things really make a difference. Um, it's also redundant to just show one photo and then the, the one photo thumbnail. So those members who have uploaded only a single photo, um, you're going to be providing a better experience to uh, your website visitors, especially on mobile. Okay, this one has been highly requested. As, as all of you know, we have the ability to stream your top level categories on your homepage. And I think we're doing it on this demo site. Let me check. Uh, yeah, we are. So um, those of you who might be using the top level categories on the homepage, uh, you were never really able to put your sub level categories on your homepage. And, and kind of let me show you um, what I mean by that. Give me a moment here. And let me be able, let me pull up a, an example of how this is going to work for you. Okay, great. So now when you go to member categories, we know that for top level categories you could upload homepage images. Now for your sub level categories, you can upload homepage images and this has just been highly requested in the Facebook group and in the webinars, and now you guys have the control to do that. Um, where you would set that is in your design settings. For those who are not familiar, let me just run through it real quick. And once you're in the design settings, you want to toggle on over to the home page layout and then the home page section order. So in the section order, you can choose different modules to kind of stack up on your home page. It's, it's probably one of the easiest things to do on your home page. And we've always had show top categories. Now you can choose to show, if you scroll to the bottom, show subcategories here. That's the, the last option. And once you do that, you can close this, toggle open the option below it. I'll just click this button here. And when you're showing your sublevel categories, there are options here. Uh, you can put a title. You can use the same one, popular categories, and things like that. You can choose how many categories you want to show. And you can also sort your categories by their, their ID in descending or ascending order, and as well as alphabetically. So you now have the ability to show uh, sub-level categories on your homepage without any additional coding uh, required. So we hope you guys, uh, that'll help you guys out who are trying to achieve that. All right, and last but not least for the new updates, is the new My Account link in the admin area. I've been seeing some posts in the Facebook group, how do I log out of the admin area? Um, here in the top right, uh, there is now a My Account dropdown. Before that did just say log out on its own. In the upcoming months, we're gonna be adding some more goodies into that My Account dropdown there in the admin. So for now, it just holds the logout link. Uh, so for the, those of you who are wondering where the logout link went, just click on my account 
and you can click on log out here. Uh, we're going to be adding some links there such as um, ways to manage your websites if you have multiple websites, um, your billing information, um, add-ons that are part of your site, and also other admins or team members that are helping you manage your sites. There are going to be links there in the coming months uh, to give you guys more control in the admin area. So just to prepare for that, we've created the My Account drop-down link here. So those are all things that have been released so far. There's actually more. We just held some back for the webinar. We hope that it helps you guys with your websites. I do have something that's coming soon and I think is going to add tremendous value and an extra revenue channel for your directory website beyond simply selling ad space and membership levels and, and things like that. It is paying per post. And pay per post is going to uh, allow people, if, if they want to post a classified ad, they need to pay first. And you would set the price for how much each membership level has to, has to pay in order for that post to be published. Let me show you guys a screenshot of what what that's going to look like. This is in the membership level settings when you're deciding if somebody can post a certain type of content or can view a certain type of content. Uh, let me show you a few options you'll have here. One is can they can post unlimited free posts. So if they're a premium member, they can, we'll use property listings as an example here. You can check this box and they'll be able to post unlimited free posts. Um, if you don't want them to post unlimited free posts, you can choose how many maximum free posts they get. So maybe they can have five free posts and that, or zero free posts. So from the, right from the start, they need to start paying for posts. And, and then the price per extra post. So you can set a price of $1 or $100 or whatever it, whatever it might be. This is going to be great for classified listings, job, job postings, uh, even property listings. And this might open up, because this is a great revenue channel for your site, you might have only free member signups and just choose to charge for the posts. Um, so now you're going to have a new revenue uh, channel for your site. Uh, which should help you double down on the revenue you're generating. Um, and your visitor, your website members might appreciate uh, that as well um, because different membership levels, as you can see here, will be able to have different prices per post. Is there anyone out there who might want to use pay per post uh, for your site? If you do, please raise your hand and uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about um, if you're looking forward to this uh, add-on and um, how, how you might want to use it on your site. All right, uh, Neil, I'm trying to unmute your mic. It looks like you're self-muted. Neil? Hey, guys. How you doing? Awesome. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing great. Yeah, this is a cool feature. We're just getting started out. Um, but ultimately, we've, we've imported about 10,000 members and and our, we've got a few signups, but the ones who, uh, they're, they're all home improvement contractors. And if they're going to invest the time and in putting a blog post together, we certainly can monetize that. And, uh, you know, we'll have links back to their profile or their website, but we, we could get a little bit for it and we probably will. Um, <clears throat> it just puts more value on, on, the task. If you don't charge for it, nobody will use it. So I, I think we'll use it. Awesome. That's great. Great to hear. And you said you're a home improvement site for, for finding yeah. contractors? Yeah. So it, the directory is favoritecontractors.com. Um, we're, we're just starting out. So this is my first webinar with you guys. But I've listened to some of the, the previous ones. It's the first live one. And uh, appreciate all the help and all the updates. Yeah, yeah, um, very welcome. It's our pleasure. Uh, with a site like the like for finding contractors, uh, and I always mention my first directory was was serving interior designers. Um, distributing and selling leads is a great way to generate revenue um, from those types of websites because the consumers come and they they post the project needs, and then the professionals will pay um, you know a fair amount for those for those leads. So I hope that you're utilizing the um, the ability to sell leads to your members. 
Yeah, that's a big part of it, Jason. Um, and I feel like I'm 80% there in terms of kind of aligning that with our our sales model and and the leads uh, documentation you guys have. I've I've probably made my way through about half of it. So gotcha. Totally, totally agree. That that is the we have a free plan and we have a silver and a gold plan. We're really trying to organize just leads only going to the gold members to really make it an exclusive uh, tier, if you will. So, gotcha. Yeah, totally agree with you on that one. All right. Well, um, the last thing, Neil, is we do a showcase my website in the in the webinars. You can email – everyone here can email events at brilliantdirectories.com. And if you need a helping hand with that, um, you know, we can uh, we can look at your lead flow model and we can uh, provide you with some tips on that. Just uh, email events at brilliantdirectories.com. And if you're selected, we'll notify you uh, before the next webinar. All right. Thank you, Neil, for uh, sharing your site there or uh, the idea for your site. And all right, let's move on. David, we have a, a good tip of the week today. I think it's simple to digest, but it's going to be super high value for everyone here in the webinar. Yeah, our tip of the week is how valuable creating shareable content is on your website. We're going to run down through uh, some examples of shareable content, why it's beneficial, how it can uh, bring you more eyeballs to your site, more signups, uh, ultimately possibly increase your revenue. Uh, and then we've got a, a nice little uh, goodie for you at the end of this. Awesome. So, so before we get into the – like examples of shareable content exactly it's, it sounds like a fun phrase but what is shareable content and where have we maybe seen shareable content before so shareable content is all around us if you spend any time online um, let's go over the three pillars of what shareable content is first one being that it's relevant to your audience if your audience is gonna need to ultimately share this content and the only way to guarantee that is to make sure that it's relevant to them. Something, you know, it, it could be solving a problem that they have. It could be giving them new ideas for something. It all depends on who your audience is. You want to make sure that the content that you're generating serves a purpose for them. The second pillar of shareable content is that it's easy to read and understand. You don't want to, uh, if, if you're writing an article, you don't want to write an entire essay that's going to take your audience you know, 10 plus minutes to read through and, and it's not going to be easy to digest and, and comprehend. You want to create uh, nice, concise uh, content that uh, that answers your audience's question or serves the purpose uh, as clear and, and quickly as possible. And there's there's actually a rule of thumb with blog posts and, and writing articles and content is once it's published on your site, you, in order to keep someone's interest most people, you don't want it to be more than four or five physical lines of text long. If it's more than four or five, it looks daunting to the reader, unfortunately. But what you want to do at that point is just put the extra text into a new paragraph. Um, and it's also cool when you're writing content to help make it easy to read is one, one line or one paragraph uh, can be something like you won't quote you know you won't believe this dot 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 and then the next paragraph starts so it's okay to it's i'd say you can be aggressive with how you break up your content and just be careful not to clump too much text into one paragraph that's part of visually making it easy to read and understand exactly and uh, the last thing is that we want to make sure that the topics are captivating. Our audience needs to be actually interested in the topic to get them to click on the article or the video or whatever uh, medium your, your content is in. This could mean that it could be exciting, could be funny, it could be informative, could even be controversial. Whatever grabs the audience's attention, it doesn't really matter which emotion it is you're appealing to, as long as it's guaranteed to pull that reader in. That's right, and and we're going to show you some examples of titles that that could be captivating as well, um, but keyword friendly and captivating, and uh, that's going to help make people want to click when they see your title, whether it's on social media or in Google, or or a friend is sharing it with you in an email. 
So if you spend the time to create the shareable content, David, like now that we know what shareable content is, what are the real benefits? And, you know, I don't have time to, to write shareable content. Like why would I want to invest in, in creating articles and things like that? Well, uh, the little goodie that we have for you guys at the end of this tip of the week uh, is going to show you that it doesn't really require too much time uh, on your part to invest in order to create the shareable content, but there are a lot of benefits and it really is essential uh, for growth uh, of your website to create and promote the shareable content. So some of the benefits, one is that it's going to hopefully, as long as it's keyword rich, uh, rank in Google. Now this also, the, with Google's algorithms, the more people actually share your article, Google takes that into consideration. So if you're truly providing relevant, useful content for your audience and it's being shared and it has relevant keywords, then it's gonna rank well in Google and that'll bring uh, some, some more eyeballs onto your site. Secondly, uh, it will provide you with valuable marketing assets. And if you're on the phone trying to get um, you know, a, a new prospect to sign up on your site, or if you're hosting a webinar for your members and you want to provide them with a little takeaway, um, you know, if you create an ebook or a, a video that you publish on YouTube, you can provide all of this um, content as marketing assets, whether it's, you know, as, as a little giveaway in an email or a takeaway goodie after a webinar or anything like that. Thirdly, it can attract audiences via social media. So this is a great way uh, in conjunction with ranking well on search engines like Google to bring more people to your site. The more people share your content on social media, think of all the friends people have on social media. Uh, if just five people actually share your content that you published, that could potentially reach you know, over a thousand people. Um, so it's really a giant, spiderweb effect almost um, of how many people can actually see your content if it's actually being shared on social media. And the last thing is that it actually does increase your brand's industry authority. So whether you have a membership directory for lawyers or doctors or home designers, if you're posting relevant content related to that industry, and it's being shared on social media, it's ranking well in Google, people are starting to see your site uh, pop up more and more in different places online, it's gonna establish your brand as an authority in whatever industry it is that you're targeting. Those are some really, really great tips because the number one question is, okay, my directory is online. Now you can keep fussing with it and designing it and moving the phone number here and the address there and putting a picture here. But what you really need to focus on is bringing people to uh, your website and increasing your brand awareness or else your growth is going to remain stagnant. And one of the best things to do is create shareable content. If you write 10 awesome things about the mayor of my town, you know, everyone's going to want to read that article. Um, and the, the mayor might even reshare it on his social media if it's all favorable uh, things. So when you create that shareable content, you're not only creating an asset for your site and making your site look good, but you're creating things that other people want to share with their friends because they have points of interest that, that will appeal to other people. And the, when people share your content, shareable content, they're doing the marketing for you. So you can save tons of money on advertising and Google ads if you can come up with maybe 10 awesome articles that are just sharing, being shared year round um, because it's universal content. And that could be your marketing strategy is simply creating shareable content that brings people to your website. I want to know 10 things about the mayor of my town that 10 embarrassing things, 10 funny, but embarrassing things about the mayor of my town. He's left-handed anyways. All right. So types of shareable content. So once you publish, what you want to do is publish content. People cannot resist. Again, we'll use the mayor example uh, of the town. Uh, so some content ideas here. Um, now imagine you were going to visit Hollywood, California, 10 things you didn't know about Hollywood. Uh, California. So that's, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's an okay topic. I think it could be better, but it's somewhat captivating. If I'm interested in Hollywood, if I live in Hollywood or I'm interested in visiting Hollywood, I might click on that type of content to learn more about it. 
uh, five marketing tools every law, law firm should use. Now, if my industry is in the legal industry, whether um, I'm catering to lawyers or people who are um, who work with lawyers, um, I might want to click on that article. And maybe I took 30 minutes to write that article and I found some good marketing tools that every small business or online business should utilize and I repurposed it for law firms. Um, so now I can share that on social media. I can share it in newsletters. Uh, and again, it's a captivating title because it has the word every in it. Uh, and, and again, a law firm might want to share that with their fellow colleagues, uh, and that's how it becomes shareable content. That's what makes it shareable content. Actually, two quick suggestions to uh, even further entice people to click on these two titles. The first one, instead of 10 things you didn't know about Hollywood, it could be um, – 10 horrible things you didn't know about Hollywood, or if you're a travel, if you, it's a travel site and you're trying to bring people to Hollywood because that's where you're based, it could be um, 10, uh, you know, 10 wonderful things about Hollywood or 10 fun things about Hollywood. And the same thing goes for that, that second article title about um, marketing tools for law firms. It could be five marketing tools every successful law firm uses. I love adverbs and adjectives. They just add so much more power to that, that. Those are great suggestions. So every successful law firm should use, right? Um, or every failing law firm isn't using, like turn it, do the reverse of it. So just things that people simply can't resist. And if they're in that industry, they need to know about. So that, that's great. Inject adjectives into, shocking adjectives into these titles as well. All right, and then the last one, again, just these are just three examples. Six Facebook groups every entrepreneur needs to join now. Um, so again, so needs to join now um, adds a sense of urgency, makes it sound like it's important. And notice that we're using small numbers, five, six, ten. These are called listicles. So you start with a paragraph or two, you identify a problem, and then the items on the list, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they basically write themselves. You're going to list the solution to that problem, and you can write a paragraph about it, and then you write a conclusion. And you might say, I'm not an article writer. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jason. If you're running an online business, you can't, you can't just sit there with your hands in your lap. You need to do something. You took the step to set up a website, and app, that's the easy part these days. With Shopify for e-commerce website, Brilliant Directories for membership websites, WordPress for simply blog websites, you know, setting up the site is the easy part and you can choose to continue working on your site. But really the important part is who is the skilled marketer who ha is taking the time to at least learn basic online marketing skills. Because once you have the knowledge and the know-how on how to create things like shareable content or maybe how to set up a Google AdWords campaign so you can get clicks to your site. Once you know how to do a few of these things, you can open up online businesses in any industry, not just the one you're serving today. So these are just some tips that this is really basic stuff that everyone should take the time, do some practice articles. We'd love to see your practice articles in the next webinar uh, if you've added them to your site. And we're also going to show you a few more examples uh, in this presentation. And it's not just limited to blog articles. You can create ebooks, PDF ebooks, if you if you're more comfortable with videos and, and speaking rather than typing articles. You can make a, a video slideshow and just talk over it. Uh, you can make infographics. There's easy ways we covered in the previous webinars with Canva.com. Easy ways to make infographics with maybe top 10 lists on them and share those uh, on different networks. Uh, if you're more advanced and, and you love chatting, you can do podcasts. And you can do as things as simple as sending newsletters to your existing members uh, in your group. So you send them the newsletter with links, uh, with information or links to your site. And on, on the pages of your site, you can have social share links there as well. So there's lots of ways to get people to your content and to create shareable content as well. All right. And after you've created it, the most important thing is you need to share it. We'll use a simple blog article as an example. One thing you can do with your blog article is post it on your social media channels. So that could be Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, they're different for every industry. And what's really cool is now when you post, uh, make posts on social media to maybe your Facebook uh, company page, they give you the, the option to boost the post or advertise it. And you can choose your audience. So if you're targeting the New York area, 
um, you know, you can you can write your blog post about awesome stuff to do in New York in 24 hours. And then you can boost that post and target people that live in New York City and let that article do the work to bring traffic and awareness to your site. Um, so posting and advertising and then also not only on your own Facebook page, but Facebook has groups like the Brilliant Directories group and there's LinkedIn groups and there's other networks where you can post your article into groups where like-minded people hang out. Now, the key when you post articles in Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups is you don't want it to look spammy or promotional. You want to post it in a way that might that benefits everybody in the group. So um, when you post it, make sure that it, your your message with the link is something not promotional, like join our site today and put a link to the article. Say here's some awesome information about I'll just about Hollywood. That way it comes off as non-promotional. It's for the benefit of the whole group. And the group moderator or administrator will most likely keep that post in the group. And groups can have dozens, hundreds, or thousands of members. So if you can get your post to stick in there and, and stay in there, that's a great way to bring people to your site with your shareable content. Here's one that David and I were talking about uh, at lunch today, honestly, is we you know, if just for even for brilliant directories, you know, we ha we create the webinar Wednesday blog posts when they're ready and we just kind of let them sit there. What a great thing to do is to ask your colleagues and team members on your um, team members that are part of your company and even friends and family after you create um, a blog post. We'll use that as an example is ask them to share it on their personal social networks. Now, maybe they don't want to mix business with the personal, but they could have hundreds of members and that article might resonate with a small percentage of those people. And that's extra traffic to your site. So look around you and ask friends and family, your kids, um, you know, ask them to share the articles for you as well. And David, can you tell us a little more about number four, what this bonus bonus is here? Yeah, it's looking for influencers in your industry or, um, Let's see. Let's so say for uh, as an example, you have a membership directory of doctors in the Los Angeles area. What you might want to do is create an article of uh, maybe the three best hospitals in all of Los Angeles or something like that. And you can link out to all three of these hospitals in this article. You can also maybe link out to the best doctors at each hospital and what they specialize in in the article. And then when you go ahead and share that article, you can reach out to the hospitals and the doctors mentioned in it and let them know that they've been featured on your website. This might then entice them to then go ahead and share that article to all of their followers. Uh, you know, if it's a big enough influencer, that might end up grabbing a lot of attention and bringing a lot of visitors to your site. You can write an article. It doesn't matter what industry it's in. Um, you know top five people in a certain industry. And once you're done with that article, let them know that you found them as a noteworthy person and you've acknowledged them in the article and shoot them a message on social media or email them if you have their email and ask them to share the article with their network too. It doesn't hurt to ask people to share content, especially if you've done them a solid and written good stuff about them on your website. So this is a great way to get uh, an influencer or a noteworthy person in their industry uh, to also share, uh, distribute your shareable content for you. And some of you may have already got this from our Facebook group, uh, but if you're drawing a blank about topics to come up for your website, we recently published our own shareable content, uh, an ebook, 125 blog post ideas. Now it does say for local city directories, but with 125 ideas, it could stimulate, uh, you know, topics for any industry or any type of website that you might have. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash 125 hyphen ideas, 125 ideas. And let me show you where that's going to take you. It's going to take you to uh, the page where we have the blog post and you can download it to your computer. And let's just browse through this here. It's an awesome ebook. It's got tons of information and tons of inspiring ideas. Uh, here are some related to locations. 
uh, I'll just use Hollywood as an example. Visiting Hollywood on a budget. 50 things not to miss in Hollywood. Top restaurants in Hollywood. Top attractions in Hollywood. 48 hours in Hollywood. So there's a lot of great topics here that you can apply to your industry. And you don't need thousands of articles on your site. I would say at most you need a couple dozen and use those year round as part of your, as part of your marketing strategy to continuously attract people to your website. Here's, here's a fun one, how to travel safely in Hollywood, how to make friends in Hollywood. So you can use this ebook, it's our free gift to you. Just go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash 125 hyphen ideas and you should have direct access uh, to this book that you could download to your computer. And let's hear from some of the attendees today. If you want to comment or have questions about shareable content, or maybe we could look at your site as an example and come up with a couple article ideas for you for your site, we'd be happy to do so just to get, get the ball rolling um, and, and see what we can do to help benefit you and your site. All right, Dimitri. Um, hey, Jason, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Pretty good, yeah, thank you. Has, has any of this been helpful for you, I hope? It has. It has been extremely helpful. Um, I'm still, you know, at the part where I just pretty much getting done setting up my site. I haven't actually brought in the visitors and the users. However, um, the shareable content is exactly what I've been working on. I actually have collaborated with a couple of people, you know, where I'm using their content. But um, I would love to for you guys take a look at my website and give me some ideas. I already just jotted down some ideas for um, articles that I'm going to write based on the ideas you guys were just giving me, but um, that's great. If there's anything additional you can, you know, tell me that, you know, could help. I'm all ears. Um, What's the name of your site? M-A-T social, matsocial.com with one T. So M-A-T social, and it's a social or directory social network for martial arts, pretty much. You know, I have a friend, Elliot, who five years ago just fell in love with jujitsu and now his it's like a religion for for this guy um, okay martial arts what a great what a great industry to write <laughs> shareable content for um, so this is going to be a directory to find um, martial arts professionals yes so either gyms or private coaches um, there's also uh, Map, you know, ways for users to sign up as students. So, um, if you look at content instructionals, that top right tab, that's basically what I was just talking about that I've recently done. But yeah, I love the idea of uh, kind of like what Gary Vee talks about jab, 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 right hook. You know, you give, give, give before you ask for anything. And obviously, to bring the users or, you know, the eyes on your website, you're going to have to provide them some content or something. Yeah, absolutely. In exchange for their time. Let me tell you something awesome you can do. Because martial arts is such a visual uh, art, a visual practice, your best friend here is going to be YouTube. All right. Let me tell you what you can do for article ideas. What's a move? What's a move in in uh, in jujitsu or something? Arm bar. Okay. So just search best arm bar tap out. Okay. So. What you need to do is just get get five videos, and let me open up my notepad here. So what you do is five best arm, five most painful arm bar tap outs, right? So now we put the word, we use David's strategy and we used an adjective, we put painful arm bar tap outs. So then you write uh, a paragraph, you know, arm bars are this and that, arm bars. You write another paragraph, arm bars are this and that. And then you do number one. And then what you can do is um, the name of the fighter, like uh, John A versus John John B, 2016, Las Vegas, right? So then write like just two sentences of this. And then you know what you do? Put the video right in the article. Put it right. To put, embed the video into the article. So the article will be five videos essentially. And you do this, you know, number two. So what you're doing is you're just 
re you're you're just kind of aggregating YouTube content. It's important to have a couple pair. I'm just putting gibberish here, obviously, for the sake of time. But um, right, right, right. You know, write a couple articles here. Now you could do this for every move there is in jujitsu, and that will be tons of shareable content um, for your site. So this this would be a great thing to do. Um, and I would want to read these articles. And what's really great is you're going to put the people's names in there, or whatever you want to put as the one, two, three, four, five. Um, but it's important. It's important that you just do a couple things. Is you start with a couple paragraphs. What is an arm bar or like this and that? Then um, for all your these are listicles. For each section, write one or two paragraphs, like four sentences, five sentences, and then uh, and then have a conclusion paragraph. Like okay, blah blah blah. Leave your comments below and share your you know arm bar stuff. Yes. And I love that um, I'm using big names, influencers, so that, uh, you know, people will be searching for other reasons that might, you know, just have the website okay, so, pop up. So you or, brought it. You know, uh -huh. No, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, like, Hoist Gracie is my instructor's um, main instructor. So that's my lineage is just literally one person away from Hoist Gracie, who is willing to pretty much kind of you know, affiliate with it and uh, basically have me create a profile for him and all that. But um, I just want to make sure I leverage it right before I kind of just, you know, slap something together and put his name up there for it. Absolutely. So, no, no, um, so he's he's kind of a big name, the Gracie, the, the Gracie guys, the dad and the, and the sons and all that. So what's really cool about wow. influencers is, I just want to say this about influencers. The people who are already A-list celebrities, it's going to be hard to get them to reshare your content because people are writing about them all the time. What's really cool is if you can find up-and-comers, whatever industry you're in, whether it's new students out of med school or law school or whatever, you know, trying to advertise their practices or um, fighters in your case that are up-and-coming and not they're not yet so famous. They might be on the B or C list of, of being famous. Those are the good right. ones to to write about in the articles because they have a somewhat you know um, good following. Yeah. Right, and they also have a reason to want to share it so they can build their own following. But I'm saying, what if I have like Hoy's Gracie? Basically, he's kind of agreed to you know help with whatever way he can, and he's the guy that won like the first UFC one yeah. and two. <laughs> Now, yeah, now, now you have, um, what do you call it? You have like a, not a mascot, but um, what do you call, what's the lady from uh, Progressive, Flo? Spokesperson. Right, um, the, you, have, you, have a, you have a spokesperson for your brand, basically. Like a mascot type deal. Yeah, not a mascot, but a spokesperson for your brand. All right. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for awesome. sharing your site, Dimitri. Actually, going along with that, a good uh, suggestion that Eric brought up in the chat, which we haven't yet mentioned in this webinar, but we have in our previous ones, is to leverage your existing members to create content. You can offer them to be featured on your homepage or maybe a month's worth of free membership or something like that in return for them writing valuable content or producing valuable videos uh, for your website. So. In this case, with, uh, with the martial arts, it may be valuable to have some members who are instructors create videos on how to perform certain moves, like an armbar, for example. Upload them and then post that video to the website. Maybe write you know, a few paragraphs about performing an armbar, when it should be performed, um, you know, the safety precautions, things like that. And then they've now created content for your website that you can share, they can share, others who come to your website can share uh, their students, they can send their students over to your site to see the content that they're producing. That's awesome. Yeah, getting your members to contribute will probably to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. The important thing is when you're asking members to contribute is to make sure they understand the incentives and benefits of doing so. So you should definitely reward members that are um, contributing content to your site, you should feature them. And, and for those who haven't contributed yet, you should have a little boilerplate paragraph or email that you send them explaining to them how they can contribute, keep it short and simple, why they should contribute, and what they can expect when they contribute as far as the benefits they'll receive. Um, mainly professionals are joining directories for visibility 
uh, to connect with more business opportunities. So that's usually the underlying benefit for why people should join your directory as well as contribute content to your directory. That was really fun looking at Dimitri's site. Oh, we got one of our best friends here, Sheila. Sheila, I'm trying to unmute your mic. Oh, looks like your mom. Oh, there we go. How you doing, Sheila? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Awesome. Remind us again where you're calling in from. Chicago. Chicago. And was this helpful at all so far, the updates and the shareable content stuff? Uh, yes. Actually, I shared your ebook to about three of the groups on LinkedIn that I'm a part of. Thank you so much. Well, that, that's proof in the pudding right there. Yes. So, um, so my website, of course, is phytoandme.com. And I wrote an article about losing my dog to dog cancer, or to, I'm sorry, to lung cancer. And I just had an idea on how to um, spruce it up. Yeah, to spru well, to spruce it up, but to write um, additional content. So if you scroll on the home page, if you scroll down, you'll see see the article. It's called Roma. I didn't know what the title is. I need to work on a title. I, ju I, I, such a I just want to comment. I love the, the background images you're using here. If I had one, if I had one recommendation for Dimitri is don't use an image. Sorry to um, backtrack a bit. Don't use no, an okay. image with, with white background, Dimitri. It's just, it's, it just becomes hard to read text and the search box is kind of hidden. Um, it's a lot easier when there's a solid background behind behind the image, Dimitri. That, that's a tip for everyone there. Try to avoid homepage images with white backgrounds. So let me scroll down here to your lifestyle. So that article there, name Roma. Okay. So this was my first article, and I know I have a lot of content, but I was I was reading that I guess Google likes articles that are at least 600 words to maybe 1,500 words, I think. So let me so let me no no so yeah you bring up a good point. So there's two ways to write articles. One is for Google, and we hope that articles live in, and rank well in Google. Um, but also with shareable content, it might be like a one-two jab where the content is so good, even though that it's short, it's getting shared virally. So, um, and then because it's a viral article, Google will then um, rank that article higher in the search results. So if you have a super shareable content article, um, it may not need to be, you know, 1500 words, but generally good rule of thumb is if you're going to write an article to rank well in Google, you definitely want it to be over a thousand words um, in today, in today's day. Okay. Okay. So this was my article. I see I probably need to break out some more paragraphs. Right. Um, right. How, however, um, I, I need an idea for the title because like I said, I lost her to lung cancer, but one idea that I have is as a dog parent, how five maybe five ways to identify possible lung cancer or when you should take your dog to the vet, you know, if they're having breathing issues. So that's something that's important to dog parents. Absolutely. And I'm sorry you lost your friend there. Thank um, you. Let me uh, let's let's update the title right now. So I'm in the manage post section of your admin and uh, there's a filter here. So I search Roma. Can I click on edit? Sure. And so this is your okay. this is your journey of, of from start to finish when you identified that um, Roma had cancer. Well, not when I I identified, but when I realized something was terribly wrong, and when I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me she had lung cancer. So that was kind of the. Uh, the point, but I also tied it into that Roma was the inspiration behind Fight on Me. Gotcha, gotcha. A quick tip here, uh, if I can jump in, regarding the title, what you yes. could do, um, thinking about what what your target audience may be searching for, is you could simply title it, um, "Does my dog have lung cancer?" or or simply do, uh, "Have cancer." Um, okay. And then you can tie that into the very first paragraph of the article and say something like, um, uh, you could rep repeat that, does my dog have lung cancer? That was the first thing that came to my mind when, okay. and then you can lead into your story. Um, I, I think that the key with titles is, is thinking of, of some keywords and placing them in the title um, relevant to what your target audience may be searching for. 
Okay, good. That's very good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the keywords are important. So with the, with what David was saying, so we have the word dog, and we have unfortunately the word cancer in here, um, and then we have an action. Five tips and actions to take now. This this could be um, a, a perfectly fine title for this article, and it would probably um, when you share it on social media, um, that's what's going to show. And and I would click on that. I have a dog, um, so okay. I, I'd want to I'd want to click on that. Um, so you can think about a title or some kind of variation. Um, having the keywords in there, posing a problem, um, you can create a sense of urgency with the title. That's why I like using the word now. Okay. And um, yeah, so so I mean I I actually like this title, but you can think about it and you can definitely Roma doesn't is is doesn't do much for someone who that is going to motivate someone to click to view this content. So as it is, the, right. the title itself is not lending itself to be shareable content. Whereas, does my dog have cancer? Five tips to take and actions to take now. Um, right. No, I and I completely understand that. I, I mean, and I knew that when I did it, but I just wanted to get it out there because it was so painful. But I also wanted to share it. I haven't really shared it that much, but still, um, that was just a place. Actually, her name is just a placeholder right now. Gotcha. No, and I, and I feel for you. It's a sensitive topic. Uh, so, you know, yeah, what you, and, and because you have an important information, you want it to become shareable content because this is, exactly. this is information that's going to benefit everyone. So by choosing a good title, you're, you're helping other people because it's, it's providing them with the information and the motivation they need to click that link because the title is, is um, encouraging them to do so. It's captivating, Perfect. It's captivating enough. That's exactly what I needed to hear from you. So thank you very much. I appreciate that information from both of you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thanks for sharing, Sheila. All right. Good stuff there. We got a lot more um, to share in the webinar. So hopefully you guys, this is a great example of an existing article that she can easily turn into shareable content just by um, updating the title. And the title goes a long way because that's the one thing people see when you share on social media. In fact, let me share this article and you'll see what we see. When I share it, the title is Roma, um, and this is just um, meta information, but uh, it should have something more like, um, you know, does my dog have cancer? Five actions to take today. That's what people are going to see. Okay, so um, before we move on, if you haven't done so, go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash 125 hyphen ideas, and you can get uh, the blog article ideas uh, for your site. And in the next webinar, if you guys have written an article or two, we'd love to analyze it, and we'd love to circle back to this and see if we can provide you with tips or congratulate you on doing an awesome job for creating shareable content. All right, and we do have a showcase winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, Colette from New Zealand was nice enough to share her site and recommend it as a site to be considered uh, to be showcased in this webinar. Uh, Colette, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your microphone. And you have joined us in previous webinars. It's just with regular questions, but it's nice to see that we're going to showcase your site now, now that you've kind of worked on it for a few months. Uh, so, Colette, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Jason. Good to be here again. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, just a little bit about your website? I'll, I'll toggle over to it. Who who the audience is and, and what some of your goals are with your website? Sure. It started in our little town of Rolleston. Um, I started it about a year ago, and it grew quite rapidly. So I decided to expand it to the district, which is a a small rural district in New Zealand. Um, and yeah, as demand has grown, so I've added extra features to the website. Awesome. And yeah, I remember it was, what is it called? Rollington? Rolleston. Rolleston, excuse me. Yeah, it was ranking number one in Google when you searched Rolleston directory or Rolleston business. And you've made the switch now to service a larger area, Selwyn. That's, that's right, yes. Okay, and I've clicked around your site. It, it seems very nice, by the way. You've done a great job. N number one, keeping it simple. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the type of content that you're focused on publishing besides the business listings? 
Well, I've focused quite a bit on um, adding activities um, and things to do in the area because I find that a lot of the community would like to know what there is to do and it brings a lot of people in. This day walks in Selwyn is one of the top pages. It gets hundreds of hits every week um, because it, it focuses on the dog friendly sites, which is um, difficult to find. Okay, so you added these images here yourself, these? Correct, yes. And you put the icon of no dog or dog, that's genius. <laughs> Thanks. Let me let me do a quick Google search for day walks in Selwyn. I don't think it comes up too nicely. <laughs> it's here. You're right here. There no, you go. Yeah, you're number five or so, number five here. Um, so that's that's good. And well, this is genius. Um, and this and this is very popular. So who comes to your site? Locals or tourists? At the most moment, mostly locals, um, but obviously it would like to branch out a bit to the tourists, or even if it's just day day tourists from Christchurch, which is just down the road. Fantastic. And along with the walks, I see you also have properties for sale. And what is window shopping? Uh, that is just to products. So any of the products that um, businesses have put on their sites. Ah, okay. So this is oh, these are local companies that are offering local products. Correct. Yes. Okay. Great. So are you reaching out to these businesses, or are you adding these products yourself? Uh, these are businesses that are listed on the website, and adding products is one of the features that they can do. Fantastic. And have you had any challenges with the site? Is there anything we can help you with specifically? Um, I'd like feedback on whether you think that my main menu there is too busy um, and if there's anything I should do in terms of the home page, changing anything, mixing it up. Fantastic. Um, so one is you only have six main menu links, which is great. You've, you've kept it really simple. Uh, what I would like to see is is some of these are two lines and then one line. I would recommend um, leveling it out and and making finding words to make it one line each. Uh, can we can we do that first on your main menu? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So let me uh, get the there. And what's really nice is. Um, you know, in the webinars, people are able to see kind of where to make certain edits. So let's see. Let's go. Let me close some of these windows here. Home is fine. Um, you could choose to remove home. It's it's perfectly fine because you're generally the logo links to uh, the home page. And because you don't have that many links, you might want to save the space and remove home. You could keep it if you want. Um, maybe this can just say coupons and offers rather than special coupons and offers. Or local coupons? Rather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coupons is not a big word here compared to the states, so that's why I've used special offers. Gotcha. Um, what if we again do difficult to decide? Deals and offers like that. Yeah. Okay, let's do. I like deals and offers. It's kind of encompassing of, of many things. At the end of the day, someone's going to get a good deal there. So let's update this to deals. And offers. And let's move down the line. Things to see and do. I would, I would, I would maybe just do things to do rather than see and do. It might be redundant um, to have both there. And right. Just, people, people are things to do is is um, what are, what people are used to seeing on travel sites like TripAdvisor. There's usually a section for things to do. Um, which includes sightseeing as well, as well as activities. So I think that would be encompassing of, of the word see and do. Perfect. Okay, things to do. I'll just shorten that. And things to read and view. So this one you have blog articles, local news, products, photo albums. So this is more like a visual library of things. Let's, let's save these changes and just check it out first. 
let's re refresh it. Okay, so now just this one is the outlier. Um, Maybe just things to view. Things, things to view. I'm going to do something okay. that we've never done on the webinar. I want to crowdsource this to the to the attendees here today. <laughs> if if you guys have ideas for what this link should be on Colette's site instead of things to read and view, it, it includes local news, products, photo albums. It's basically media. Um, new, actually, you have news, photo albums, videos. Let's crowdsource this. Um, raise your hand if you have an idea for what that link should say. Um, let me let me lower everyone's hand first. All right, now if you have an idea for what that link should say, please raise your hand. All right, Barry. Uh, Barry, how you doing? Hi. Yeah. Other side of the world from uh, our friend. I'm in England. All right, Barry, do you have an idea of what this link should say? Information. Information is great, actually. Yeah, good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Barry. Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> All right, so let's update that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's information because it's about the local area and it's going to have uh, information in it. And what we can do is what we can, we can expand local news. How about we do local – you know what's even better? If we do sell wind news because that puts the keyword in there actually. So instead of local news, if we did sell wind news, that's going to be good for your SEO. Is that okay? Perfect. And then um, – we could do um, this one. I think we could do local products because it makes sense the type of products. Um, and instead of photo albums, let's do photo galleries. Um, and then what are the videos of exactly? Things to do, or what is the video library? It's again from businesses posting information either about their business or um, oh, anything. So it's all posts from businesses that are listed on the site. So in that. Let's do member videos then, so we know that it's from the members. It's not from from Colette publishing those. So let's okay. save the changes there. And let's refresh the page again. There we go. Blog articles, Selwyn News, local products, photo galleries, and member videos. Let's do a well, we are I like to do before and after, but that's fine. This is really nice. Also, the hover text is black. I think we should change that. Let me change that in your design settings. So when you hover over these, you're getting black font, which is kind of hard to read. I think we should just keep it as white. Um, and then we could look at another section of your home page. So that's under your main menu. Link hover color, do white. All right. I like your popular searches here. Uh, you created this widget yourself? Yes, from the classifieds homepage. Okay. I'm going to, I'm right, the classifieds, so, so you kind of replicated. I'm going to add more space between these two. It's, it's kind of touching this section a bit much. And I saw that you, you, you made that custom from the menu manager. I'm just gonna, this is a little quick what I'm doing here, guys. Don't, don't worry too much about it. Uh, I'm going to add a new link. And I'm going to just give it um, a spacer, which is this, and I'm put it at the top, which will give it a little breathing room on your home page. So if we refresh the page here, oops, I need to do one thing. There we go. Get rid of that dot. Should get rid of that dot. Yep, there we go. So now you have a little bit of breathing room be between your uh, title here. And I love the, how you use this title. You're not using a search module on your homepage. You're going, you're, you're creating a very visual experience, Colette. And I think this is something a lot of us can use on our directory websites is rather than stuffing it with text um, and search modules is utilizing images um, kind of like the subcategory and the top level categories that you can stream on your homepage. We talked about that earlier in the updates. Um, upcoming events looks great. I love how you went from the boxes here 
to the upcoming events listed horizontally, and then you're breaking up the page by choosing the article with sidebar um, a streaming widget here, which is one of the options in the design setting. So you've really broken up the page to show not only a variety of content, but you're showing it in a different format each time. So we have the boxes here, horizontal events here, and then the sidebar with the uh, articles here, and then it goes down into your footer. I think your homepage has the perfect amount of content on it, not too much, not too little. Great, thanks very much. And is there anything else that you want to cover? We just have a little more time to do one more review of your site. Is there any other questions you have or, or things you'd want to kind of modify or update? Yes, I would love on um, searching businesses, so in the search results for any of the, the businesses, to either remove or um, simplify the specialties part that's shown. I see. So here are the specialties. Um, I think I have an idea for you. Um, we could make the font size a bit smaller. And, right. and we could just move the specialties right above this in bold. That way this will be able to go full width here. It'll be a small modification, but not, a, not, a, not too difficult. The reason I want to do that is because on mobile view, which a lot of my, um, the community uses mobile to look at this, it takes up a huge amount of space for each um, business. I would recommend hiding this on mobile view. Um, that would be awesome. All together. Let me, let me hide it on mobile view first. Uh, so this is uh, going to require me to go into the code uh, just a bit. We're going to edit this search results view for members. And we're going to edit the listing, search results member listings. And I'm just going to go into complicated code. Nobody freak out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a hidden excess is the code here. So this is your uh, list of specialties. I'm just going to add a class here. And that should take care of that on mobile. And let's, let's, take a, let's refresh the page and take a look at this on mobile view again. So now it's now it's gone on mobile. It just has the the name and the reviews and, and just the basics. So it's much easier to scroll through uh, these these names here. Great, that's awesome. I do have one more recommendation um, regarding your design. Is um, and uh, you're using a, a larger than what's normal font size here, and it could be competing with the titles here. This is kind of title text here. I would recommend reducing it um, just a click. Let me let me show you what I'm referring to. Um, just a moment. So what I'm referring to is reducing it down to this size. Yeah, that's great. So you had it at 18 for your regular font size, which is a little jumbo for most people and and um, I think you'll you'll actually people are used to this font size 14 is the regular font size here where is that just so that I'm aware in future sure. so under design settings it's it's actually one of the main website design settings and you have your body font size the re the general font size uh, for your whole site set to 18 so I'm just going to drop that down to 14 Colette great And what's been your strategy for getting businesses to kind of join in on the site? Are they just excited that there's a directory for the Selwyn area, or are you manually adding the businesses and then letting them know they've been included in your site? I'm doing a mixture of things. Being a fairly small area, it is a lot of word of mouth and a lot of me having to contact people, go out, show them what it's all about. Um, and with the restaurants, what I've done is I've... Um, I added all the restaurants in Selwyn and gave them two months free. So I've now been promoting the restaurant stuff with giveaways and um, a lot of social media promotion. Um, and I will let you know in a few weeks' time as to whether that was successful or not. <laughs> Fantastic. So just so we have people from all around the world, um, where Colette is calling from here is, is uh, New Zealand here, I believe. And let me zoom in. This is where the Selwyn New Zealand area is. Is this correct here? 
That's correct, yes. Okay, so just for some perspective uh, for, for all of us here. Um, and do you have any final tips for anyone who's starting a directory in a local area for, for any of the attendees here today? I think the important thing is um, the content, as you pointed out today. Um, doing lots of social media um, seems to really work well, especially Facebook in our area, but just getting word out there. And I've found that the, gen the community groups, Facebook groups, has been an awesome way of getting um, a lot of publicity in our area too. So that was a good tip that you made today. And I think part of that actually is when you have genuine intentions, and again, you're not trying to solicit or be spammy or self-promote, when you really have genuine um, intentions, that your community will be more receptive to you um, and what your website is offering, I think. Absolutely. Um, today we gave away the, the restaurant voucher, so that was a great post that we've just done too. Great. Um, well, I think your ma main menu looks a lot better. I, the, the font size is fine. Um, information was great. Thank you, uh, Barry, for that. So I think, uh, yeah, the, the few changes we made uh, with the spacing and the sizing should help your site out very much. Thank you so much, Colette, for sharing your site with us. Thanks very much, Jason. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. All right, all the way from New Zealand, let's give a round of applause for Colette and her website. It seems to be doing very well. She hasn't done anything rather complicated, to be honest. Um, she's focusing on just a few types of content that she feels her, will serve her area well. Um, and she's doing a lot of outreach to the businesses. And because it is in a local area, it's, it's easy for the local businesses to connect and want to participate. And that actually brings me to another um, topic is, um, a lot of people have plans to make nationwide directories or worldwide directories. And why that might sound good, you're thinking there's billions of businesses in the world and if every business pays me a dollar, um, you know, I'll be the next Mark Cuban. But the, the larger your audience or the, the, if you're going nationwide and you're going to include all businesses, it's very hard for a potential member to see themselves on your website. It's for them, it's just like joining a nationwide Yellow Pages directory and it's a hard sell. And there's there's so many websites for that. When you specialize, if you can find specializations, whether it's by location or industry or a combination of both, when you approach members, they're gonna feel automatically that they should be a part of your community. And the sign up process for them is gonna be a lot easier as far as them wanting to join and seeing that they really belong in your community. So good job here in specializing in a local area and we're definitely seeing the success of a site like this. So thank you again, Colette, for sharing your site with us. If you'd like your site showcased in the next webinar, Go ahead and take 30 seconds right now and email events at brilliantdirectories.com. Just include a link to your website that you would like to be showcased and we'll notify the winner prior to the next webinar. We'll choose one website for the next webinar. So if you'd like your site showcased, please email events at brilliantdirectories.com and just include a link to your website. We really look forward to seeing, um, we always get lots of emails. It's great to kind of sift through the, the websites. And I'll be honest with you, the majority of the sites that we see are doing a phenomenal job. So keep up the great job, guys. All right, now that was tons of information, David. <laughs> lots of updates, the shareable content, even Colette's site had tons of, of useful information that I think everyone could take away. Now it's time to um, help you guys out. If you have questions about your site and would like us to uh, kind of look at it for a moment, go ahead and use the raise your hand feature and we'll be happy to take a look at your site and provide you with some feedback and some ideas on potentially how you can uh, make your site a little better. We've actually got a really good question in the chat from Wendy and she was asking if a member becomes past due, how does the system handle that past due member? Are you do you get notified? Are you supposed to follow up manually? How is that handled? Perfect. So um, past dues are relatively new to the Brilliant Directory system and they're awesome because you can take action and, and see exactly what those amounts are. There are no automated emails um, 
to the member and that's right now that's done intentionally because it is a new feature and we don't want to send false alarms till we've done enough testing uh, we don't want to send a past due email to someone who's actually not past due but um, the best thing to do is log into your admin area from time to time, you know, weekly or, or twice a month or whenever you're managing your site and just toggle on over to the transactions history page. And obviously you can see how many past due people there are. Um, and if they should, if you want to give them an extension or if you want to cancel their membership, you can take that action there. So it's something you want to stay on top of right now um, manually and hopefully you don't have too many people adding up to your to your past dues but that tab is really helpful because it does show you uh, it does allow you to identify uh, the profiles and the members that uh, need to update their card on file. All right good question there uh, Wendy and let's see who else has their hands raised here. Um, if your name is showing as admin sci-fair info, uh, I'm trying to unmute your mic, but it looks like you're self-muted. Oh, there you go. Hi there. Hi. What's what's your name there? I'm Anna. Anna, thank you for joining. How'd you like the webinar so far? It's great. I haven't uh, been in one of these probably in a few months, so it's nice to be back. Awesome. Great. Um, yeah. What's your site and what's your question? Uh, the website is cypherinfo.com. Okay. And what's your question for us today? So um, we haven't had that much success um, as of now. One of the questions that we had was, do we need to specialize into something smaller rather than um, having all types of businesses um, you know, to be able to join. So we are kind of thinking about that question. Gotcha. Should we specialize or, sh or should we stay general? So as I was just mentioning in, in the example with the, with the Selwyn website, there's definitely advantages to specializing in. Um, not only that, so let me ask you a couple questions about your site. Um, is what it, What is um, SciFair? Is that an industry? like a tech industry or what is that exactly? No, is that it's, it's an area. It's an area in the suburbs of Houston and um, it includes about seven zip codes. So it's a pretty large area. I kind of went um, by the school district, which is Cypher School District, and I chose those zip codes in that area. Okay. You said it's in Texas? Did I hear that right? Yes. Okay, I just want to see where it is on a map real quick. Let's see. Okay, it's within Houston or it's next to Houston? It's in the outskirts of Houston. Okay. And let's just check out your site real quick. So first of all, I think you've done a beautiful job with, with the design of your site, keeping it simple. As far as aesthetically with the colors, you, it shows very nice. You're, you have a nice logo. Um, I would recommend a couple things for your site, actually. Um, okay. The first is I would add a slogan under the, um, the logo. Okay. Um, um, because a lot of times with local sites, they could be white pages to find residential um, people who live residences. So Cypher Info might be something like that. So you need a slogan. If you had to think of a slogan for your site, um, what would it be? Tell me, here's, here's, here, I, I have two questions for you. I, I actually, once in a while, I, I, you know, we, we do kind of these um, coaching calls and I jump on them and I ask a couple, couple things. So who is your, who is your website serving? Is it Cypher locals or people that want to maybe travel to Cypher? No, Cypher locals. Okay, that's important. So Cypher locals. And what problem or is, is the website solving for them? What is the website helping them solve? To uh, find out about local businesses, activities, events. Okay, and here's the million dollar question. Here's the question everyone hates to hear. Why would they not just use Yelp? 
or Google or Google Places or locations? Well, uh, that's where I think that the content that we are able to provide can help as well. Um, you're, we, you're, you're the correct. whole idea. The idea was to offer great content that anyone who lives in the area, if they want to find out about the new business that just opened or what activities can they do with the kids this weekend, we want them to come to our website. Beautiful. Okay, so I think yeah. that shareable content stuff is going to come in handy, actually. Like yes. top 10 yes. family restaurants in, in Cypher. Uh, 10, right. 10 great weekend free weekend activities for the kids um, mm -hmm. so you're you're exactly correct so with that said I do have some recommendations uh, for your site okay um, one is I would cut back on properties uh, articles I would just have one news or articles um, yeah I don't have anything in there <laughs> okay which one of these do you not have anything in? Uh, properties, okay. can, articles. All right. Can I get rid of properties from the menu? Yes. Okay. Yes. This will be fun. The main menu is not just navigation. It kind of sets the tone for what your site is offering people. And one of the pitfalls that a lot of directory website owners fall in is they want everything. Brilliant directories yes. can help you publish coupon jobs, classified properties, articles, news, sound bites, all that stuff. And a lot of people they want the they want our all-in-one theme because they want all of these things. But this is really just to show all the different types of content you could publish. The key here is you just want to have, and Colette was doing a very I want to use the word elegant, elegant way of showing content. She she was only using about half of these types of content. Uh, and it's making her job easy to do two things. One is um, it's less main menu links. So the purpose of her site is easier to understand for people who come to it. And number two is it's easier for her to fill those with content because she can focus her energy on those three or four or five different types of content rather than nine or ten different types of content, which makes your job a lot harder to fill. So just for everyone who's out there, if you guys have a lot of content and there's empty, um, empty areas, Instead of crossing your fingers and hope it's going to be filled with thousands of listings tomorrow, just just get rid of it, is my opinion, until you're ready. So let's get rid of properties okay. here. And let's save the changes. And then do you have articles? You have one article. Do you have news? No. Okay. So, so. We were trying to link in um, the bar on the side which is movies just local movie theaters yeah and i think um it's also showing from our district okay Below. classifieds is tough too because you're going to in the beginning stages you're hoping that obviously the members are going to be posting the classifieds and if your site is just starting out you don't have a lot of members so you don't have a lot of classifieds Classifieds is like the crown jewel of what every local site wants. They want to now Facebook offers classifieds, Craigslist, um, next door, the next door app is classifieds. That is really um, reliant on a lot of member activity. And when you're just starting out, the, the truth is you don't have that member activity. So you probably want to get rid of classifieds to start. Uh, so let me remove okay. this from the main menu also. We're going we're gonna to get your menu right, and then we're going to give you a good direction for your site. So um, let me let me remove the news. Is that okay also? That's fine. Okay. Yes. Let's also remove jobs because jobs is very similar to classifieds. It's very reliant on right. member contribution because you're not going to go and post thousands of jobs to the site. Um, yeah. So let's remove jobs also. As you guys are thinking, Jason, what are you doing to my website? But um, let's look at it right now. Okay, now homepage. You can get. You have the. Okay, that's fine. Now what we want to do is let's look at actually our travel guide theme because it says travel guide, but it could be for locals also. 
And again, Colette, I just want to champion you again. You did an amazing job. So look at the menu links. It's not just events. They call them like things to do or food and dining, deals and offers, events and shows, travel ideas. So the main menu links become more like shareable content titles. They're things that you actually want to click on. They're not just single words like events. Um, you can even use like hot deals and offers, you know, to make it even at, put an adjective uh, before that. So let's look at your menu links and the members. I see what you did here. Let's click on members. So here's another thing I like to do for local directories. Instead of calling it just like a local directory, what you might want to do is call it like preferred businesses or add an extra level of value to why your, your directory is special. Um, so I've, I've come up with other names in the past, like approved, approved business directory, trusted business network, um, you know, th things like that. So instead of members, we can call it like, um, I don't know, David, what's a good, what's a good name for that? Could do, um, professionals, local businesses, um, um I, I want to um, show both members and businesses that this is about the local community. So anything that can emphasize that will be great. If that makes sense. Maybe new sci fair businesses. Gotcha. Let's bring some excitement around the community in that way. New is also good, even though they might be in the directory for a while. But yeah, putting something before it will add a little more pizzazz to it. And then when you're pitching people to join, they want to be part of that. I'll use the word preferred, preferred business director. You're adding value now to the directory part of your website simply by using the correct choice of words or, or preferred choice of words. <laughs> um, so let's do um, let's do deal deals and offers I, I just right now let's do that and then what we can do is um, sci-fair news um, and then we can do local events or you could do upcoming events let's just add that there I'm not so happy with the uh, the one for members but it's okay we can come back yeah. let's do preferred business directory I like that. Yeah, you approach it. Would you like to be part of our preferred business directory for the SciFair area? It just sounds nice rolling off the tongue. Yeah. All right. So. Do you believe it's important to showcase the, um, you know, the little, what are they called? The show if they are like the top level members, the little badges. Do you think that's important? Especially when I'm just starting. I don't think I think it's um, it's too important. I'm, I'm falling into the same trap here uh, with the two lines. Um, mm -hmm. So let's do. I'm just going to use the word network there. You can change. I just want to get it on one line for you. So that should do it. Preferred business network. Wow, that sounds good. Upcoming events, deals, and offer. yeah, you could just be a, a business network as well. Um, so I think you've done a good job. Clear back. So here's here's one. Ready? Here's an article you wrote, clear backpacks for stadium visitors. What is this article about? Uh, new policies on um, the backpacks or bags that you're able to bring into the stadium. Which stadium? It's a big football area. Which, which stadium? Yeah. Uh, this is the Berry and Pigeon Stadium which are the two stadiums for schools for the district. Okay. This is for school sporting events? Correct.
new cipher law passes. Talk again, we're going back to shareable content. You've already written this article. Let's let's compare your title to this. So you can I like putting you could put it in brackets too. There's no rule against using that kind of stuff. Um, you could do not, new cipher law and then protecting your your kids, right? Using the word your cuz parents are probably going to read this. Your kids with clear backpacks for sporting events. So you're creating a little bit of sense of urgency, a little bit of scares. You're talking about sci-fi laws. Um, this is something that can go viral, at least within the sci-fi um, area, rather than a title of clear backpacks for stadium visitors. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sounds very boring. <laughs> it sounds boring how I have it. You're right. So everyone on this webinar, you, if you haven't written articles or you have articles, go back and figure out how you can make the titles more captivating, even if that means scaring them a little bit um, and, and, and creating a sense of urgency because that, what you're trying to do is creating shareable and clickable content. Can I go ahead and update the artic this article title for you? Please. Okay, thank you. Um, so that is a blog. So we're gonna go to blog articles. So here are the clear backpacks. Really like the color scheme you've used on your site. So let's Thank up, you. let's update that. And now let's take a look at that uh, article. New cipher law protecting your kids with clear backpacks for sporting events, clear backpacks for stadium visitors. So this is now cipher news. You're creating news for the cipher area. So um, I think what we've done is good on your site to start. Um, just focus on news, offers, events, and the businesses. The events are nice because you can list them yourself. The deals are nice because you can list them yourself. The news is nice because it writes itself. You just have to figure out what's hot in that area and you can write about it. So all this stuff you can write yourself um, and create yourself. And then the businesses now we've given more value to the directory so more people would want to join. I would also recommend creating a slogan. Um, and the slogan should touch on an emotional note, not a literal note. So a literal note is find businesses in Cy Fair County or whatever it is. Um, so it's you could be trusted news and resources for Cy Fair, um, Cy Fair residents. It's a little long, um, but you could do trusted resources for Cy Fair residents. So now you're using the word trusted in there. Um, it's for the sci mm -hmm. residents. So even if I'm not a resident, I'm trying to learn about the area, I know I'm at a site that has authority on this subject because it's serving the citizens of sci -Fair. So um, this, this is an example of something that could be a slogan for you. Um, and trusted resources keeps it open so you can have events, news, and things like that. Right. Now when Let you, me ask you. What? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I had thought about reducing the amount of um, links on the top, but my main concern was how can I show uh, pros prospects like uh, businesses of all, of all the things that they can possibly have access to if it's not on the website? Like, how, do you understand my question? Like, if, if I tell them we have classifiers, we have this, we have, you have that ability not, to do that. They, they don't care. Your members don't care that they can post a classified. I hate to say it, especially the businesses. The members will care mm -hmm. later when you open that section of your site, but you shouldn't open that section of your site till these four sections are, are filled. They don't care that they can post photo albums. I'm just, I'm just generally speaking, what they care about is two things, visibility and are they gonna connect with more potential customers as far as the businesses. Um, your site serves two people, businesses and then the, the local residents. The local residents are the ones that are going to post the classifieds and the job and, and things like that. But your site isn't ready for that yet because if you do that now, okay. you're going to have to target two audiences and you're going to have to do double the work. And you're just, you're, you know, you're just one person. You're, you know, you're just a small team. So it's better you focus on the content and the business signups rather than the, 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 the local resident signups also. So make your site a resource where the end user is the local resident, not necessarily someone that you want to sign and sign up and create a profile right now. Okay, sounds good. 
All right. Um, and I hate to say it so bluntly, but it's it's true that you because you're you're a one one woman show, you need to be really serious about how you um, compartmentalize your time um, and your energy. And so with with this you now have a little more ammunition for reaching out to businesses and asking them to join. And your job, we just cut your job in half, half with filling your, your site with content because now you just have to focus on events, deals, and news. Yes, it's, okay. it, it all makes sense. Right, your site is a content publisher. So you're publishing content and for right now it's gonna be this type of content the bonus is the business network where people can find preferred businesses. So the, the directory actually takes a backseat to your content in this case. And the content is what's going to be the, um, the driver for businesses wanting to sign up. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for, for sharing your site there with us. All right. You know what? Um, only a few people have their hands raised. That's fine. Wendy, uh, Wendy, I've unmuted your microphone. Hi, I'm here. Can How you doing? Me? Yes, we can. Um, how did you like the webinar so far today? Oh, I loved it. Good information and good updates coming. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, we have a little bit of time left. Do you have a question for us today? I do. Um, for the past due um, amounts that some members may owe, they uh, a few of them want to pay and i'm trying to understand how they would do that if it's not going up uh, uh, pay the past due amount um in addition to the current amount owed. so if it's not done automatically can you just walk me through how a member would pay a past due amount Abs absolutely um so what would happen is if the member was going to pay it themselves, um, let me see the best way to to show this. Or how else would they pay it if they don't pay it themselves? Sure. So, well, you can collect it yourself. If their card on file is, is valid, you can, you can then, let me go to the past due page. Uh, you can go to the actions link and click on collect payment. And if the card is valid, it's going to, collect the past due payment, just that single payment. And if the card is not valid, it'll say, hey, the card is still not valid. Please update the card on file. And you'll actually have the option to update the card on file. So maybe you're on the phone with the customer and they're gonna they're gonna you know provide you with the credit card information over the phone or some other means. Now if um, give me a second here I'll show you exactly um, how give me one moment. I'll show you how the member can pay their past due payments themselves. Right. Just one moment here, and this will be good for for everyone to see. Let me. I just have to find an example for you. Okay. Okay, I got a good example for you. Yes. Okay. So, here's an example. So the person will log into their account and they'll click on their billing information tab in the uh, in the admin. I mean, on their when they log into the member dashboard, there's a section for uh, billing details. Uh, let's go to our, our demo site and I'll just show you where that is here. So you log in and there's billing details. So here's the page for billing details. If there's a card on file, it'll show it and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but if they scroll down, there's a payment history area and it shows all the invoices that are past due. As you can oh, see, right. and what they can do is they can attempt to pay now, and it's basically what the collect payment button does in on in the admin. If the card on file is valid, it'll process that payment. If it's not valid, it'll attempt to process it and then tell the person, hey, please update the card on file. And it itemizes every single invoice that might be past due. So it's not going to collect them all. It's going to be one by one, which is actually better um, in case there's an error. You don't want to collect you know, hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars from someone uh, if it's not supposed to be. So it would be one by one. Pay right. now, pay now, pay now, pay now, pay now. Does that answer the question? Absolutely, yes. Thank All you. Right. All right, great. Good question there. Thank you. Thank you for sending us home with that final question, Wendy. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So we had a lot of updates today. I'm just going to backtrack on some of the slides. Um, so first of all, if you'd like your site showcased in the next webinar, please email events at brilliantdirectories.com and include a link 
to your website will notify you prior to the next webinar if your site has been selected. Big shout out and thank you to Colette. You're doing a great job with your site and a wonderful example for all of us here on Webinar Wednesday. So thank you for sharing your site with us uh, as the showcase winner. Um, you can get the special ebook gift if you haven't already done so. Go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash 125 hyphen ideas. And I'm just going to backtrack through these slides. We all know the value of shareable content. You know, setting up the site is easy. And, you know, again, there's tons of tools to get a site up in, in 30 minutes if you really wanted to. But once the site is online, you need to bring interest and people to the site. And shareable content is, is, a, is a method that does the heavy lifting for you. And it's inexpensive. You just have to put in a little sweat equity and let the content do the work for you. Uh, lots of updates we shared today. Paper posts will be coming up in the next 30 days. That'll be an amazing add-on. If you're part of the VIP add-ons club, you'll get automatic access to this new tool, and it's going to be a completely new revenue, revenue channel for your website. So hopefully sales will increase if you have a money-making directory website. Lots of updates we shared, and if you haven't already done so, please join our Facebook group. Take 30 seconds right now. Go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. If we didn't have time to get to your questions here today, we'll be happy to carry the conversations there uh, in the Facebook group. So on behalf of myself and David, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode of Webinar Wednesday. Have a brilliant week, everyone.